you hear that? Okay. Yes, I do. Great. Yeah. There we go. Um, it always, it always comes on and suddenly people get very buttoned up. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, it's the same thing. I'll try not to. <laughs> no, I mean, exactly. I, I feel buttoned up when I hear that sound, but. Um, we will start uh, with uh, just a, simply an introduction. So if you could introduce yourself, inclusive of perhaps name, uh, and of course, if there's any question you don't feel comfortable with, you can answer in to whatever degree you feel comfortable with. I want to slide that across okay. the table. Yep. But if you could introduce yourself, uh, name, age, perhaps, gender, sexuality. Okay. Age. Do you don't have give to. A this, ballpark? Is, this is what I mean. There's no, um, there's no right or wrong way. Whatever you there's want no to There's no right answer. or wrong. Okay. So should I, should I connect it with Sex Garage though? Like introducing myself like, no, just sort of like Wendy or, Stevens. Whatever you feel um, comfortable with. You can actually, sure. Yeah. If that's your impulse, let's go with that. Okay. Because I, I always feel like Okay, well, my name is Wendy Stevens, and um, I am the person, the poster child for basically when Sex Garage went down in the media at the time. Um, I presently live in Wakefield, Quebec, and um, I'm a shop owner and an artist. Great. Um, and can I ask, uh, what are your pronouns? She, her. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Oh, and I, yes. Oh, I didn't say yes. The obvious. <laughs> and I'm gay. No, sorry. We can do that again if you want. <laughs> I think this is great. I love this. Okay. Um, um, would you like to, to do that again in a way that you feel more? See, this is all very on the spot, though. That's why I have to word it properly. I'll probably stumble over. I, I too, am not very good in front of a camera or on microphone. So... That's okay. Oh, let's see. Can we come back to that? Or is, is it okay yeah, in editing? Or you want to get 100%. it all in sequence? That's let's okay. go to something else and then I'll come sure. back. So um, you've answered it a little already. Um, first question is, did you attend sex garage parties? Party? Yes, I yes. attended the sex garage party. Um, and I knew Nicholas very well. So I was uh, who created the party. And so, yeah, it was... It was kind of a, like a first for me, though, like going to that kind of after hours party. And uh, but, but yes, I was definitely there. And how would you describe Sex Garage as a place, as a party? Oh, my God, immersive. Like it was amazing. You walked in there and there was a vibe. There were um, people were like contortionists doing things there was music there was dancing like all the people it was just a really interesting very cool setting and uh but that's what nicholas was known for too so it was a great party until about i think about 4 30 in the morning and then it wasn't so much fun anymore so mm -hmm. and yeah if you could speak to what do you feel was its significance at the time the sex garage event itself to the community see i don't really know to be honest because it was kind of that was just the scene back then too like nicholas came up with his you know images and imagery from new york and he wanted to recreate these kind of parties and so it was all really new it was so much freer back then too like even though we weren't like you know like there was no one on the police board for instance which is what uh, sex garage ended up allowing and that but we we had this like underground kind of party scene that so sex garage was just another party it was just a warehouse party and um but as like a major significance i think it only became significant after what happened to be honest mm -hmm. because that was the catalyst for everything that happened in the queer community in montreal really interesting um would you what would you say makes or made Sex Garage what it was. There's a lot of, and, and perhaps this is not um, something that you feel from your vantage point, but we've heard that there's, um, that it was uh, so safe, that it was so ex incredibly inclusive, that it was yes. for the folks who were on the fringes of society 
um, and deeply interesting, right? Regardless Mm -hmm. of uh, gender or orientation. Um, And so is there something essential that you remember that really made Sex Garage that, that thing? As I said before, yeah, it was just sort of just the vibe of the city and the crowd like there was no like it didn't matter if you were talking to a drag queen or you know a a gay boy or a gay girl like it didn't matter right like everyone just sort of hung out and you know and it was just as I said it was so much freer back then it was just amazing and so I I think the party scene like of course you know there, there was just different crowds like different cliques in the same space but we all like were there for the same reason which is amazing and it was just always a fun night always a great time so yeah. off of that who is sex garage for at that point it was for everyone actually i was after i got beaten up i was saved uh from my ex-boyfriend when i used to date boys his girlfriend was at the party and she saved me like she ended up and i ended up <clears throat> excuse me going to their house and he cleaned me up and everything. So it was like, everyone was there. It didn't matter if you were gay or straight or whatever. And everyone was included, which was important. And uh, and those who wanted to be there could be there. And yeah. was there anything else like Sex Garage at the time? Not really. I mean, there were clubs, like there's, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Cox and catacombs and all and all those bars and that so there was like a there were different scenes around um it was also a time when actually women weren't allowed to go into the some of the boy bars like that was a time too which we fought against and 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 that but um yeah no it was just his, I mean his party was it was special it was a build-up of course it was an event type thing but we had a really cool scene going through great um And we're diving into some uh, some questions about that evening specifically and um, the events of that evening. So again, I'll repeat if there's anything that you don't feel you want to talk about or um, aren't comfortable sharing, you can simply um, just say so and and we'll redirect. Okay. Okay. Um, So my first question is, uh, do you remember the night of the raid? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget <laughs> what happened that night. It was it had a huge impact on my life. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. Um, and in that moment when you were there, uh, did it feel as the party was uh, being made to end like a typical party shutdown? Or did you sense as it was ending that there was uh, a promise of the danger that was to come? Oh, yeah. Well, at first they came in and that was the odd thing, because when they first came in at around, I guess, it, I mean, I don't quote me on the time, but I'm assuming because all this sort of went down around five or so in the morning. So I'm, I think around four, four thirty, they came in and all the lights went on. So, of course, everyone's standing there. But then the lights went off again and the music started. So everyone was like, OK, and the cops came and they left. And then so everyone kept partying for a little bit. But then this one person, the first person who had gone out, he was roughed up by the police. And so that's when everyone started panicking a little bit. And uh, my friend and I, we were parked, like, so when we went to leave the building, we were parked to the right hand side. And the police were all there and they would not let us go to the right. Like they made sure everyone was corralled onto Beaver Hall, which was odd. So yeah, there was that kind of like, what's going on here, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then the standoff where there's all those famous photos from Linda Hammond. And, um, and then my my issue with it was as i'm standing there with my friend we kind of got separated a bit but the police started rushing us and i started running but then i was like why am i running and so i stopped and i turned around and i'm like what's going on like because i mean i just didn't understand what was going on and that was the first time i was knocked down like literally two days later i had like a fist on my chest because i was punched down to the ground and so yeah it was traumatic i was you know um so that's when it's your your adrenaline kicks in you're not quite sure what's going on people are running and then the third time i got knocked down i could not get up and that's where that photo is from the gazette where i'm on my hands and knees and dominic is off to the side and i did not know dominic at all um but he's the one that came to my aid 
picked me up because I was in shock. Like I was just like, okay, I don't, I have no idea what's going on now, but I could feel my face burning. And uh, so as we're running up uh, Beaver Hall, I'm trying to look at my face, you know, in the, in the reflection of the windows and such. And he's like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm like, oh God. So running, running, running. And yeah, so like the panic and they chased us. Like they, there were police cars on the sidewalk. Like it was complete madness. And this is my perspective. I mean, everyone's sort of got their own thing that happened that night. But I just remember the police coming up on the sidewalk, chasing us. And the only way we got away from them was on St. Catherine. We went down and it was blockaded. Uh, there was a blockade rather um, at Place des Arts because there was jazz fest or something or just for laughs going on. And that's the only way we got away from the police. And I remember distinctly hearing the tires stopping at that barricade. Like it was complete madness and everyone sort of joined up there and um and that's when I ran into my ex's girlfriend <laughs> and she was like you're coming home like we're gonna clean you up and all that kind of stuff but um yeah no it was it was pretty intense like it, and it took not just a couple of days even like I I you know years later I was being affected like the nightmares and stuff like for safety reasons and and that yeah. like you know comforting places and dreams where all of a sudden you're being attacked and so that happened for a bit but um yeah the initial was just like complete shock and then with all the protests after and that like it just sort of rolled into quite a large uh event so but it was intense yeah and I'll never forget it yeah ever yeah there's something that i want to ask a further question about and what you just shared thank you for painting such a clear image as well of of your experience oh, yeah. that night um was there anything that may have um triggered or did you notice anything that happened right before the cops started advancing um no. you, there was not yeah i mean there was the banter right like the famous banter that you you read about um for sure there was definitely yeah. like some but but also because you don't corral a bunch of people at five in the morning that have been like out <laughs> kind of thing, and and then come on all aggressive without your badges on and and all that and also taunting people there was a lot of like gay gestures you know derogatory gay gestures happening from the police force and as I said, they didn't, well, as you know, they didn't have their name tags on or anything. And it was just like this kind of, so as people started talking, like, you know, what the hell's going on? And like, you know, everyone's sort of getting, like, we're all stuck there. You know, the conversations happened. And, but yeah, so some, obviously on both sides, there were gestures and such, but you would think if they were professionals, they wouldn't be doing that, right? So well, nobody yeah, should or doing what be they did. doing what they did that night. Yeah, it was complete insanity very much and so. then it's disturbing the peace when it was a warehouse or like industrial area as well you know yeah. so anyway yeah. um yeah and off of that the name tags was that something mm -hmm. um did you notice a moment where they took them off or was that something they had already had them off when you uh saw them as far as I'm concerned, they, they were just off. Yeah, I didn't see anyone physically taking one off, but um, they just didn't have them when I saw them. Gotcha. And that, yeah. Oh no, and they were really aggressive too. There was, um, there was well, on the third time when Dominic came to get me, there's a little tiny police officer, a little cop, and he's the one that had so much aggression towards me. And I don't know, I still don't know if they knew I was male or female, to be honest, like when they when this was going down. Um, but he just kept screaming at me, like, get up or I'm going to break your ribs. Like he was going to kick me. And, and like, this was the kind of thing. And that's why I was just frozen to the ground and not quite knowing what to do. So I am forever grateful to Dominic because he, um, he saved me. And eventually we became like, we lived in the same building. So it was really kind of nice. <laughs> we got to know each other better than that. Well, very grateful to Dominic is, is, uh, yes, yeah, I can only imagine. Um, I I want to to um, again preface that you can answer this question in whatever way feels comfortable to you. Um, that night was obviously uh, incredibly traumatic, as you've indicated. Um, and I'd like to ask, when you think back on that, I'm interested in knowing how it made you feel 
we understand the events, but there's a human element that is harder to document, harder to share. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can point at that um, and folks can empathize um, as best they can, but I'd love to know how it was on the inside for you. Yeah, it was a range of emotions for sure. Um, Shock, anger, you know, a little bit of, uh, like even with my family too, you know, like I wasn't out to my family even, and all of a sudden I'm like the poster child, (laughs) which was really fun. Um, But there was zero problem there. My family was very accepting. And, um, but my mom, I remember my mom being really upset because not at me, but at the police and every and the situation because you know she's living up here in Wakefield. I'm in Montreal. She, you know, all of a sudden, like you know, I'm on the news and that, and she's just like, "Oh God, what's going on?" And so at first it was a bit of like, "Well, you know, you put yourself in that situation, kind of thing, right?" Like that's what she yeah. said first. And then when I came up, I brought the tape and I showed it to her, and yeah, she was in tears by the end of it and just like really upset with the police and couldn't believe that they did something like that, you know, uh, to me or to anyone. And so in the end, it all worked out. But so there was that, you know, initial, like, oh my God, there's a lot of attention kind of thing. And, um, but it also, it made me, it definitely made me a stronger person. Like I don't put up very much uh, when it comes to stupidity or, <laughs> or, or some, you know, injustice and that. So that sort of instilled that in me for sure. Like that definitely became a prominent, which I'm really, so that's why I, like even in the claims thing, it was just like, you know, everything has a silver lining, you know, kind of thing. Like it was a horrible thing to happen, but at the same time, I'm glad it happened, you know, because it did push us further forward. And, um, and it also made me grow as a person too. And, you know, and it, it, um, yeah, I think there's always a positive and a negative, right? So, but it has, it's definitely, has it affected me long term? No, but do I forget any moment of it? No. <laughs> so of it's course. just like you deal with it, right? And that's it. So, but I'm very proud to have been part of it, even though it was not permanently scarred, thank God. <laughs> but it was just like, thank God. <laughs> that was the thing. It's like, not the first. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but there is, there, there, are, if we can identify any small, small sliver of a silver lining in this, you've identified some, you've grown, and also <laughs> no lasting <laughs> no, uh, permanent scarring. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. Oh, wow. But um, um, go ahead. Sorry. I'd love to know. Um, so beyond that night, moving moving forward in time, how did the community respond when they discovered that this had happened? Oh, I well, I mean, with all the, you mean during the, the protests and all that as well? It, it really yeah. came together. Like that was, that was the, uh, and again, I can't push it enough, but there was no social media then, you know? And it, so many people came out because it was like word of mouth, like you're calling your friends and it's like, holy shit, like this went down last night and we're all going to be at the police station, you know, like come, we're going to do a kiss in, all this kind of stuff. And so, yeah, it was like instant. But I remember walking down in that area, the first one, and people in the high rises were throwing bottles at us, like plastic bottles, but bottles. Like, so we didn't have a lot of support (laughs) at first, but then as it went on, there was more support. Oh yeah, like it was, Montreal was a different town, man. It was just like... And so when we were, it was down at, um, at Guy, at Guy, I guess, Guy and de Maisonneuve or wherever it is. And yeah, they were popping things down on us and stuff. But then eventually, the more it went on the media, the police really messed up in front of the media, you know, by beating people up. And um, so the more of that that happened, the more support we got, I found. And uh, and we had some really good people in the community that sort of could sort of take the reins and like push it like right through, you know, so it, it, it did work out in the end. It was tough, but you know, battle scars, right? Like it's, um, it's an important thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder, yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't heard about um, the bottles being thrown. Oh, no. You all know, <laughs> okay, that's yeah. the first time that's been mentioned. Um, I, of course, it was on camera, it was in the light of day uh, at the, the kiss in. Um, yeah. But I didn't realize that there there was such um, 
resistance to that initial gathering them by by other people. Um, I know that was a moment Well, yeah. of, of recognition, I think, for a lot of how um, these people are simply just people. It's not an idea of a person or some abstract concept. It was a moment where it was realized, but I didn't understand that at the uh, event itself, there was still active resistance from external forces. For sure. And plus, you know, these people may not even have known what went down. They just saw this march, right? So, but why would you throw a bottle? I have no idea, but you know, it's not everyone in the building was throwing a bottle. <laughs> it's always someone, right? Um, but yeah, no, that definitely did happen. And, but also I don't think the majority of Montrealers really knew what had gone down because it was just so fresh and, uh, yeah, but you know, we all made our police reports. My friend came, like we got separated, of course. Um, but my friend came the next day to take me to the hospital because everyone that was injured had to at least make a report of it and such. So we did that. And, um, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty brutal. I, my injuries, like I had Billy club marks up my back, like three different, like actual clubs up my back. Um, as I said, the fist mark on my chest, my facial lacerations, like it was, and like the doctor was horrified. I remember like, yeah, the triage guy was just like, okay, no, this is like, and I wasn't the only one. Other people had gone with like collarbones and like dislocated shoulders and things like that. But that was the only reason too, I believe I wasn't arrested. that day or that evening because wow. I had facial scars. So like they probably didn't want to have to deal with that because they wanted to do a resist, like, you know, uh, disturbance of the peace and all that kind of stuff. So no one that was injured, I don't think got, uh, got arrested, hmm. but wow. yeah, um, I know. Yeah. Um, sorry, just taking a moment to, to take that in as well. Um, Moving forward in time again, uh, did you participate in the kissing? Um, and To you an may extent. have, okay, yeah, you may have had uh, other matters uh, to attend to after after the the events. Yeah, no, Yeah. I was Okay, there. okay. Yeah, I was definitely there, like the whole, like our whole gang was there and stuff. And um, yeah, I got out before the police came in, though, because I kind of, I was still in like PTSD, right? Like, <laughs> there's a picture of me where I'm looking down and my roommate is like talking to in my ear or whatever. And um, I was just like, we were, that was at that protest kind of thing. And, uh, but the minute the, the riot police started coming back in again, I, like, I just sort of went, no, I can't do this again. Like I, I can't, right? And so my couple of my friends, we just escorted me out. And that's when everyone came in. And my roommate was arrested. She's the one in the uh, famous like chokehold, you know, as the police are, like Wow. dragging her through. T yeah, Tara. And um, so, yeah, but I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get arrested that day. I didn't really, yeah, I didn't want to be a part of it at that point because I was just like, yeah, Absolutely. I was in shock. Yeah, I think. And that just brought it right back. And I was like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> Well, of Sorry. course, like Yeah. not even 24 hours later, really, like or about 24 Exactly. hours later. Yeah. Um, Yeah. so prior to the police coming out in riot gear, I understand there was, um, well, there was a lot of resistance uh, from them. They were, um, organizers had been promised a conversation, a dialogue, um, about, uh, and, and yeah, a dialogue about bringing forward the, their requests and in some cases demands of um, what ought to, to happen um, with them and at the kiss in prior to the police coming out in riot gear. I wonder what that felt like, what that looked like, um, what that event was in its true purpose. just empowerment, I think, just taking it back, like showing that we're not frightened, you know, something's got to change. I think all of that, to be honest, like everyone was just really, I mean, and it wasn't like a new thing, gay people being beaten up, right? Like, that's the thing. I, I think this was just sort of like the straw that broke the camel's back kind of thing. Like, it's like enough, like this is totally over the top, like them going to that degree to like, to cause this kind of trauma for people. Yeah, I think people were just fed up. 
with it all. And finally, we can get together, we can protest it, you know, we can show that we're, there's a lot of us, you know, kind of thing. Like, it's yeah. just, yeah, empowering, I think, for any little sliver of hope from it. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a, I had a follow-up question. It, um, I guess, right. So what changed? You mentioned there was um, br brutality toward the queer community it was not new. Raids were not new. Right. Um, but what changed, of course, was there being a camera, there being documentation. And I wonder, at the Kissin, um, how did you feel about there being, uh, you know, larger media broadcasters, like the the wider sort of mainstream broadcasting associations were present and and listening? How how did that feel? I, think, I guess. It, yeah, I thought it was a necessity. Like it was like it needed to be out there. This was like a huge event so yeah i was i didn't really think of it at the time but i'm very grateful that all of those media outlets were there because then at least it you know it wasn't hidden kind of thing you know what happened like you know what ended up happening with police i'm not even quite sure but it wasn't enough obviously <laughs> like everyone who was arrested had to pay a fine and you know take a plea and all that kind of stuff so like it, we didn't win in that way but you know there's other it, it just brought it to the forefront the, to the, the attention you know and as you said with the cameras and you know I, I can't remember the who was the broadcaster it was a female broadcaster for cbc I, I mean she was just like in tears at the event you know she couldn't believe that this was happening mm -hmm. and that so it was shocking to everyone and so it was definitely um like a turn however they say it like you know yeah. getting around the corner kind of thing of something new but i mean there was a lot of violence in general too though it wasn't just towards the, the queer community like there was a lot of violence uh montreal police were a little bit uh wild west at that point yeah. so and it was the this sort of brought them at down. the time Oka crisis yeah, at the time as exactly. well there's a lot going on um in that uh, yeah they were context. amped up they had yeah, they had no patience. They were amped up. They were just like, it was getting out of control. So this brought them down too, uh, a couple of notches. But uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah. But it strengthened, it strengthened the queer community for sure. Yeah. Um, we're traveling there naturally anyway. Um, I wonder, how did the community respond to the events of the Kissin? What came next? next I, I'm not quite sure what that means like um, as we I guess uh, uh, sitting on the outside where I'm hoping to gather thoughts or um, uh, sort of document from the the words of those who were there what the ensuing activism was at the time um, so what what did the events of the kiss in prompt the community to do or feel what probably just to continue it yeah and to be more present and to be more like out there kind of thing like montreal is a very 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 free town like for that i mean if that's what you're getting at i'm not quite sure but i i traveled across canada and I was really naive, my my friend and I, because I did a photo series called Dykes and Their Favorite Hats. And it was just like, so it was across Canada. And so my friend and I traveled and, you know, both from Montreal, we were like, we were like, you know, everything's queer, yay, you know, kind of thing. And then as we went across Canada, we slowly started, like it started like dropping, like, oh, wait a minute, people don't have these rights, you know? And like, I had some women uh, from my project, they would come with their partners who would, who would pose for me. And I'm like, are you going to, pose and they're like no I'm a teacher I can't like if I get if this gets found out I'm fired you know so like this was also in the early 2000s so but yeah like so Montreal I found like I would walk holding hands with my partner I, I there was there wasn't that fear I found uh, maybe it was naive but I think we sort of gathered that you know like and sort of took that and ran with it because yeah. it was a pretty flamboyant town at that time so it's good <laughs> and I guess that's um, because of the activism that came after the kiss-in. 
Um, well, that's it. You know, you give you give a community something to hold on to, right? And and especially something that that was so horrible that happened that it it did. I mean, did it last forever? I'm not saying it lasted forever, but it definitely did bring the community together for yeah. And people all we like, all of my friends and generation know Sex Garage. Like they know the story, right? Because it is it's an important story. Yeah. So, did you participate, or or what do you remember from or about? Let's try that again, Kara. <laughs> uh, what do you remember about the activism that came after the Kiss In Sex Garage? I I don't know if I can really because um, I don't really think it it doesn't stand out for me. It was just things that happened, right? Like um, we had <clears throat> excuse me, we had a community center, like you know, which was amazing. We would go there. Uh, there'd be like photo exhibits there There'd be like a community feel for that um again just yeah i don't know if, uh, for me maybe i'm not the best person to ask about that because i okay. just sort of went through life like la, da, da, you know <laughs> like everything's fine and and stuff and also i moved to the uk as well like shortly after all this went down so Noted. yeah so i was gone for a bit as well what did you move yeah. to the uk for out of curiosity uh just to escape, actually, I'd had it sort of up to here after that had happened to me. And then I'm sure you know of Joe Rose. Uh, he was a friend of mine who was murdered like the year, not even a year before, I don't think, and or a year before. And so Joe, that had hit me. Joe had hit me like really hard. And then this hit me. And I was just like, you know what? I'm done with Montreal. Like I was really done with Montreal and I just wanted out. And I'd been to the UK before. So I just thought, yeah, I'm going to move back for a bit. And uh, yeah, so it was quite funny, actually. It's a cute story, too, because I was trying to rent out my room uh, in the apartment to this friend of mine, well, a friend of a friend. And so we ended up bar hopping around the plateau all night kind of thing. And by the end of it, she's like, I'm coming with you. <laughs> so she came to England with me, which is great. And then we had a relationship over there. We didn't have one in Canada, but over in England we did. And it was quite funny. But um yeah, so that was find, too. You had to find a I had new to find a roommate, but, Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, okay, well, if you're staying, if you're coming with me, then. So that was not a problem. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I yeah I left for a bit, and then when I came back, it was the um, it was the diversité parade kind of thing and and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. So this is perfect for guiding me right to my next question. Um, were you at the first Pride March or the festival that occurred in Park La Fontaine? Yes. Yes, I was. Yeah. Wow. And uh, that was amazing. It wasn't huge, obviously, but it was it was amazing. And uh, yeah, no, that was a great, a great event as well. And, and necessary too. Yes, definitely necessary. And I can only imagine a feeling I've, I've seen the uh, foot, some footage of dancing, the celebration um, yeah. Because you were there, I'll ask, what did it feel like? It felt amazing. It was just, it, it felt very comfortable, you know, it's seeing just different people and old friends and all that. And like, just, yeah, make it was nice. It was just like a, no pretense or anything. It was just like, everyone was there just to have fun and to rejoice, basically. And that's, that's what happened. Yeah. The events, yeah, like the out. bands playing. Mm -hmm. I was going to say to be out in public as well, like in a public space, having this type of celebration, I can only imagine would be so gratifying after everything yeah. that came before. I think hindsight's twenty twenty two because when you're doing it, it's like, okay, this feels right, you know, whatever, but it's only after you realize the impact that it would it had or the image that it projected, you know, kind of thing. But at the time, it was just like, hey, yeah, we're having fun and we're together and we were dancing and la 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 human steps was there like uh, the dancer from the uh, louise la cavillere i think her name is and um yeah so it was just special it was just something really special beautiful um yeah i guess yeah is there anything else that you remember as a really poignant or important or just simply awesome rad moment of that uh that event, those events? Oh, man. 
I don't know, nothing like, like, I mean, just everything was, I just remember like marching even and, you know, just like, actually I have a, I have a photo right here. I can show you. This was Alana, the girl that came to the UK with me. So this was her and I in that parade. I don't know if you, is this a reflection? I don't know. I, there is a little Yeah. reflection, but I see it. That's a beautiful photo. Yeah, I love this photo. So, Oh, yes. man. And I, <laughs> so just, yeah, it was just that, you know, it was just like a really soothing kind of, and especially after everything, like it felt like we had come through, like I wasn't here, mind you, but like, you know, the community had come through and then this was like the cherry on top, you know, kind of thing to be able to celebrate like that. And so really important, but yeah, that, I love that shot. It's amazing. It is amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, You're welcome. so there were so many people that you're, that you've mentioned. Are you still in touch with anyone from those days? Yeah, actually. Um, well, actually, I just saw Jackie last weekend in Montreal. <laughs> so that was nice. Um, yeah, and Nicholas, I see every time I go to New York, I see him because uh, we have mutual friends. And so that's really nice. And Linda Hammond, more over social media, we keep in touch. But out of all, yeah, that's pretty much all of them. Yeah. It's meaningful connections to, to hold on to, I guess, in some way. Um, yeah. 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 People Oh, for who sure. witness, Yeah, exactly. people who witness a important, share important moments uh, in your life. I, yeah, it's, it's wonderful that you're still Yeah. in touch with, with a handful. For sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, moving more toward the present or the days, the, the years, days following um, all of this, do you feel that there are strong community spaces uh, in your world? You know, you're, you're in Wakefield and not Montreal, but at large, do you feel that we have strong community spaces? Uh, I'm kind of out of the loop, you know, kind of thing. Like I'm <laughs> like, I just do my own thing. I have my little community kind of thing, but I must admit for a small town such as Wakefield, there are a lot of queer people here. And um, so last year, we were, you know, a couple of years ago, we were supposed to have our first pride and all that kind of business. So it's very open here too. Like when I moved back with my partner um, in 2009, like, we had no problem we'd walk around holding hands like everyone just knew us you know as a couple and stuff and so it, i'm so i live in kind of like a little utopia here in a weird way because it is it's just everywhere i've gone it seems to be very uh accepting like everyone's been really accepting and i've i've never had that struggle you know i'm very fortunate to have had that but wakefield it's a very artsy community and um yeah there's just no one cares It's like, yeah, do your own thing. It's all good, you know, and uh, but but we're having issues up here, too. So there is a community in that sense for the younger people. Um, there's a school just north of here where they're starting like there's a lot. There's a few trans kids in, in the school. And so they're getting backlash. And I don't know if it's related to what's happening in the States and it's all social media, you know, influence or whatever. But like these kids are tearing down. you know, the flags, the pride flags and that and and urinating on them, for instance, you know, or throwing them out. And and it's like this is happening in 2023, you know, and so it they're on it, which is nice. Like they, you know, they just recently had a talk up there at the school and for, you know, to be more accepting and all that. But it's it's still an issue. The fight's never going to be over kind of thing. I feel my fight is over like I'm comfortable where I am and I and I know you know I support who I want to support and you know and such but yeah it's um it's always going to be a struggle I think and especially hearing that like it was really discouraging to hear that yeah um, we haven't had it in Wakefield per se um but there's actually there's there's three three trans kids in the elementary school here right now and so like the village is all aware everyone you know respectful and that so I do live in a bubble yeah Understood. You mentioned yeah that you have you have your community, you have your uh, your people. Um, what does yeah that look like? I guess in your world, it looks remote <laughs> that's the sad part <laughs> okay 
because <laughs> I do. I have my community. Unfortunately, they're scattered all over the place. Like I do have a few people here that I hang out with, but my actual like core tribe community kind of thing is, uh, yeah, remote. Kind of. Gotcha. But, uh, but that's okay too. You know, we do what we can. We've just all yeah. we've we've just aged out. And we've all separated. <laughs> it's like do your own thing. But um, but here in Wakefield, like the friends I do have, like again, it's it's not a like nothing's an issue everyone's just very cool about everything and and the ones that aren't just keep their mouth shut like that which is really nice so hmm. as well yeah if, but the uh, struggle is real the yeah, struggle is real <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah I, and and it it feels like there's different people at the forefront you know leading or if you think of the image of a, a flock of birds flying there's always a few at that point, at that tip of the triangle of the V, um, it seems like, and they rotate, right? So it's yeah. There's exactly there's always someone at the at the tip of that that V, um, forging ahead exactly. and, and being made to be a leader. Um, this is a broad question. So wherever your mind takes you is the right answer. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. What are your hopes for the queer community going forward? Oh, wow. Um, acceptance, peace of, my God, just, I don't know, what, what would you call it? Just equality, just anything, like, you know, just to live your life and and that's it and not have to, like to not have to worry about anything is probably the best thing that could ever happen, you know? Like just live your life and don't sweat the other stuff, you know, kind of thing. And stand up when you need to stand up, that's all. But mm -hmm. I just, yeah, that's all. Because I mean, as for myself too, it's just like, I'm still, I'm not, an, I don't consider myself an activist, but I'm still very much like, in it and you know and uh and it's tough sometimes you can get really consumed so i just wish that for the queer community just like to not have to deal with anything like that hmm. great That's thank you thing. um this is a, a question that's inspired by another interview we had um i'd love to hear your thoughts on it about how do we create culture when we don't have to fight for it I, my God, <laughs> uh, just, I guess, to live your life, like, you know, morally, like your morals, like you're just to continue, again, I think it ties into being yourself and continue being yourself and, and projecting that and that creates a culture, like, you mm -hmm. know, and without any sort of yeah, without having to fight, which would be fabulous, you know, just if people just let them each other be who they want to be. And that's it. Mm -hmm. that's, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, culture, like, it's tough, too. Like, there's a lot of culture like this. This is part of is part of gay and lesbian culture, you know, kind of thing. But then that may not resonate with another group that's, you know, there, too. So it's just, yeah, like you have to, I guess we all have to just sort of continue expressing ourselves. Yeah, self-expression no, no. is maybe a, not the is a yeah. good answer. Yeah, because yeah, yeah I, th I do feel that's that rings true to me that culture is created by a series of individuals, right? So full exactly. expression. Unbound. It's not like we have a dinner, you know. <laughs> we don't have a plate named after us. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> We're not Putin, you know, kind of. Thing. <laughs> yes. Well, so maybe you have that's to do a new. Your thing. <laughs> that could be a new idea. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> oh my oh, god, man. too funny. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you um feel that I've not asked about that sort of that that you'd like to share about that that time or about the, no, the topics think, we've covered? Yeah. No, I think I think we've covered like it really well <laughs> kind of thing um yeah just i mean the only other thing i could add on was like you know but it's like you know the emotional it was just the emotional like damage that it did at the time you know and stuff and how important you know 
that was to sort of deal with and how many you know years like that but that's just all moaning and complaining it's just life but yeah but it takes it takes a while you know like an event like that that's why I've all I'm really happy when someone's doing something about it because or you know like the McLean's article or whatever like you know like the interviews and that because it's just we we can't forget it like something that affected me so traumatically for years like I don't want it forgotten and I don't want to be approached by someone on the street saying something stupid to me you know like I want people to know who what it is and and all that and that you know that's another interesting and this is total sidebar please do not use this but years after um there was an event at gay pride in Montreal and it was called sex garage and so I was like super excited because I thought okay they're doing something about this no they just took the name and I was just like okay and so that was my first like you know that it was moving on and stuff and then then sex raj just disappeared kind of thing so i'm really happy that the real story is coming out and in a concise way i'm really excited i want to go see it too you have to Please tell me when do. it's on yeah. yes um we will yeah. um the the dates so that you know the the proposed dates would be the um 16th through 19th of august okay yeah um, so after shortly after montreal pride Okay, fabulous. Um, great. We've got um, as we're this. This is thank you so much. We we are so happy uh, to have you uh, share your your words and and uh, memories and time <laughs> with us for this. Um, we're asking a few uh, folks who we're interviewing um, to if they are uh, willing to to offer up a couple other things here first is where we'd love to um for creative purposes um mm -hmm. see if there's a photo of you from the 90s or of that time that we could might be able to have and utilize okay yeah if you're if you're comfortable and the well, from thing, sex garage though or just in general doesn't have to be no we, okay. we of course like we we um we're in communication with uh linda don hammond um, about right. her photos from that night. And it's, I guess all of this is in the interest of humanization. Okay. Um, these are, these are people, these are everyday, um, identical, recognizable people that this happened to, um, it's yeah. yourself, right? You, as, as you like, there's, there's, um, so it's not because anything was done, right? This is a very, um, it was could have been anybody really who right, was on exactly. that screen, right? Or so, um, and uh, we are seeing you now. We get the the beauty of of speaking to you now today, and um, to also show to have context. This is you, and this is also you. Um, right. So if we can, you can think about it, and and we can keep communicating about this via email, and the other. Um, the other requests and some people are saying yes and some people are saying no and it doesn't it, it's totally fine either way but in okay. the same interest uh or the same toward the same ends um uh, some folks are capturing themselves of just like selfie style like uh doing regular everyday activities like brushing their teeth or like making their coffee like walking your beautiful dog who i would love to know the name of um, <laughs> frank. <laughs> frank hi frank <laughs> Um, yeah, I was like, I should have in should have asked for the introduction of Frank at the beginning. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, he's a major part of this storytelling moment now. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Oh, he's sleeping the whole time. Yeah, it's a good point. So a selfie doing something. Hmm, or okay. Like, but, and, and that's um, totally, uh, I, can, I can send you some more context via an email yeah. so you have a, a bit more um, clarity. But those are two things that we're um, seeing if folks are interested in in offering us in the interest of fleshing out our our visual storytelling. Okay, yeah. for sure. And it's interesting you're doing this because when I did um, the photo series, and I didn't really make the connection before. I mean, I maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But um, yeah, my whole thing with the Dykes and the Favorite Hats is to show 
how lesbians at the time um, migrated even, you know, because so I had like a written thing like where I do hand analysis, like handwriting analysis as well, got their sign, why the hat, where they were born, what the, you know, so it's kind of interesting too, because that's what I wanted to show in that series was that we are just regular everyday people, you know, yeah. kind of thing. And um, so that's just interesting. Yeah. So I'm totally into that. I'll, I'll give you cool. a selfie of some sort. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, which leads me, I want to come back around to that introduction. Now that oh, we've chatted, now I'm... that we're comfortable, um, and perhaps we can uh, introduce Frank as well. And, <laughs> and Sherwood, however, like, however it is that you would perhaps introduce yourself, um, in any context and you can include your your sign as well um <laughs> okay that would be awesome yeah whatever is you okay so uh let's see hey okay, i'll start don't look at me no just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay so hello my name is wendy stevens i am a gay piscean who lives in wakefield quebec i um am a shop owner an artist and a dog mum and this is Frank. Hello Frank. <laughs> there there we go. Is that better? I don't know. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um yeah. Maybe we can I, do another one if it doesn't it doesn't work out. Whatever. Oh gosh, no, this is perfect. It's it's um there is no right way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, true. I always get nervous as you must know, you know. Of course. Like, yeah. Um I'm going to I'm going to pause/stop slash this recording. Um, okay.